Hello, this is Mark Shinesk, Senior Application Engineer with Silo Design Solutions. In this video, we'll discuss the new GeoSlam Zeb Locate, its operation and workflows. We'll conduct a quick scan, process the data, and then look at the data in Autodesk Recap, InfraWorks, and Civil 3D. We hope that you find this video informative, and here we go. What is the Zeb Locate? It's an integrated system that allows you to geo-reference your point cloud. Connect your point cloud to the real world without the need for external control points. Using a Zeb Horizon and Backpack frame, build a point cloud with precise location positioning. Collect and create an accurate point cloud in minutes. Integrated with GPS location using our Zeb Locate software. Track and maintain fixed assets, including those owned and operated within the utility market. The Zeb Locate consists of the following hardware. A GNSS antenna, in our case a Trimble Catalyst, connected to a sturdy backpack frame using a standard 5 8 inch threaded connector. An external battery can be added to supply power to the attached cell phone through the antenna. A GeoSlam Horizon attached to the frame, as well as the data logger and power supply with all the cabling. Before you begin scanning with a Zeb Locate, you must be sure to install on your cell phone the Trimble Mobile Manager with Trimble Catalyst service and the GeoSlam GPS logger app. Connect your cell phone to the Trimble Catalyst antenna and start the Mobile Manager. We'll have to go into the Android device and app setup to allow the service to run properly. Go to the Trimble Mobile Manager settings and look at position source. Be sure that the GNSS receiver type is set to Trimble Catalyst. Next, go to the GNSS Configuration tab and be sure all the settings are set as shown here. Next, we'll go into the application settings, make sure the units are set to meters, and that share location with your regular applications is turned on. In order to share the precision data from the Catalyst application, we'll have to enable mock location in the Android developer settings. To enable developer settings, open up the settings screen of your Android phone. Scroll to the bottom and tap About Phone, and at the bottom, About Screen, find the build number and tap it seven times to enable developer options. Set the Trimble Mobile Manager as the Mock Location app and force full GNSS, then exit the options. In the general settings, the location needs to be on, but all location services within it need to be disabled. Wi-Fi and Bluetooth accuracy improvements should also be disabled. Now you're ready to scan. Set the Zeb Locate down into the starting position. Start the Trimble Mobile Manager and allow it to start collecting satellite data. Once enough data has been collected, you'll see the satellite icon turn green and the message RTK fixed appears. You're ready to start scanning. Your accuracy is going to be about 2 to 3 centimeters at this time. Start the Zeb Horizon scanning. Once the Zeb Horizon starts scanning, go to the GeoSlam GPS logger and note that data is being collected from the Trimble Mobile Manager. After about 5 to 10 seconds, you may start the GeoSlam GPS logger, put on the backpack, and start collecting your data. As you conduct your scan, make sure that the straps are tight and walk at a normal pace. During your scan, periodically check the Trimble Mobile Manager to make sure that you're receiving accurate data and that the icon remains green. If the icon should turn yellow momentarily, don't worry, as long as you have about 60 seconds worth of high accuracy data, the geolocation process will work correctly. 
As the scanner is behind you, you sometimes may have to turn to capture details of an object. Also, make sure to make large sweeping movements and loops within loops to get a good solid slam solution. When you finish with your scan, carefully remove the backpack and set it down back at your starting location. Stop the GPS logger and then stop the scanner. Upon returning to the office, the first thing that we will do is retrieve the GeoSlam file from the data logger and start processing it in GeoSlam Hub using the default settings as we would for a normal Horizon Scan file. After processing in Hub is complete, we'll go ahead and take a look at the model using the GeoSlam Hub Viewer. This is just to review the data to make sure that we have no drifting, the model looks good, and we're ready to proceed to the next step to start to tie in our model to our geolocation. The data from the GPS logging app is extracted from the cell phone as a CSV file. Here I'll open it up in Excel and show you it's divided by GPS time, latitude, longitude, ellipsoid elevation, and accuracy. At this point, I'll flip through the data very quickly to review to make sure everything looks good. After we've completed processing everything in Hub, it's now time to use the Zeb Locate processor to merge everything together and create our geolocated point cloud. The processor program is divided into three basic areas, process, calibration, and system. The processing page is where we bring in our data files. The Zeb trajectory file is the trajectory of the scanner head from the IMU and comes from GeoSlam Hub. The GPS trajectory is the data logger file that was on our cell phone as we were collecting data from the Trimble antenna and will be a CSV file. Once we change our file type, find the file and open it, we can bring it in. The point cloud is the resulting LAZ that comes from GeoSlam Hub and comes from the scanner data and we'll open that as well. The next page we'll be looking at is the calibration page and this is the lever arm data from the Trimble Catalyst antenna to the scanner head. Listed as minus 0 0.10 and minus 0 0.35, these will remain the same from unit to unit as long as the Trimble Catalyst antenna is used. If another GNSS antenna is used, these values would have to be measured and changed appropriately. The last page we'll look at is the system page. Here we can set the GPS data type as being Trimble Catalyst or we have a couple of NMEA uh, formats as well. We also have a coordinate system set, in our case WGS84 UTM Zone 50 North, but I can set it to a state plane zone or another zone if I want to, in which case I would change and then save the data before going back to process. Once all the files are set, I can go ahead and begin processing the data, but now is going to merge the LAZ with the GNSS data. A dialog box indicates when processing is complete. And once I dismiss the dialog box by clicking the OK, I'll get a graphical re representation of the trajectory registration, which shows how well the GPS data and the IMU from the Zeb Horizon scanner coincide. You'll also see an RMS error in the lower right corner. Here you can see I have a blank area in the upper left where the tree canopy caused the GPS accuracy to be above the acceptable level but that's okay as the remainder of the scan was enough to merge the two together. I am now going to start an Autodesk recap project where I'm going to convert the resulting geolocated LAZ file to an Autodesk RCP file so I can bring it into InfraWorks and into Civil 3D. I already have the folder to import so I will select the file to import. This will be the registered point cloud.laz, which is the file created from the GeoSlam Locate processor application. We had set the original point cloud to be created and moved to UTM WGS84 Zone 15 North. So I'll choose that for my original point coordinate system, and I will convert that to a state plane coordinate system. Missouri 83 
Eastern Zone U.S. foot. And then I'll start the import process. Once the LAZ has been converted to an RCS file, we can launch the recap project. This will allow us to view the point cloud and make sure that the conversion has taken place successfully. Once I've converted the recap project, let's go ahead and bring it into Autodesk Civil 3D. First, I'll set up my drawing settings, matching the coordinate system, at NAD 83, Missouri State Plains, Eastern Zone, U.S. foot. I'll then go to the Insert tab and to the Point Cloud Attach command. I'll browse for the RCP file that I just created previously, select it, and hit Open. Once the Attach Point Cloud dialog appears, I verify the settings are right, and I hit OK. The Point Cloud gets attached to my drawing as shown. To verify that it's in the right location, I'll go to the Geolocation tab, turn the background mapping on, and the Bing mapping will appear. And as you can see, the point cloud does indeed appear in the right location. Now let's create our Autodesk InfraWorks model of the site. Here I have a model created with InfraWorks Model Builder with the courthouse in the middle of the downtown. I'll go to my data sources. I'll choose a new data source and choose point cloud as the category. I'll browse to the RCP file that we made earlier and open it. It now gets added to the stack of the data sources. I'll double click on it to configure. I'll check to make sure that my coordinate source is Missouri 83 Eastern foot. But remember when we collected that data, one of the columns in there was ellipsoid height and not orthometric. So I'll have to apply a correction value to the Z value to make sure that it comes into the right elevation. I'd go to a place like the NGS, Geoid 18. I'd find the correct transformation in the Z value for my latitude and longitude, and type that in the Z offset value. I'll estimate the value to be about 110 feet at this time. I'll go ahead and type that in, configure and refresh, and my point cloud appears inside my InfraWorks model. I can now use this InfraWorks point cloud model to go ahead and add buildings, site features, roads, and any other type of objects that I'd like to see within my InfraWorks model. This concludes our video presentation of the GeoSlam Zeb Locate. If you have any questions or would like more information, please contact us at cadtechnical at silerinst.com. Also, please subscribe to our blog at www siler dscom forward slash blog for more tips, tricks, and information on Autodesk, GeoSlam, drones, or other types of information. Thank you and have a great day.